Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified auto doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again with a very very interesting topic that is a part of that series of problem solving technique. Step number 5 about the effective implementation of the corrective action. Well, if you see in our day to day life, we are actually verifying the effective implementation of something. It is as simple as that, you know, we put a lock and then sometimes we check again that whether it is properly locked or not. Or maybe when we are uh, closing our door of the car uh, by a remote switch, then sometimes we feel that, okay, let's check whether, you know, the lock is properly effective or not. Something similar happens in the industrial environment also, wherein when we implement the corrective action, we need to verify that whether it is effectively implemented or not. As for the damming cycle of PDCA, plan, do, check and act, once we do, means we actually do the corrective action, then the step comes three, check that whether that corrective action is effectively implemented or not. And there are three key purposes of doing that verification. The first purpose is to see that whether we are confident about that particular solution, that whether it will work or not, that is very important. Secondly, to validate that whether that action plan is actually working or not. And thirdly, and the most important thing is, we want to verify and ensure that there is no risk or the potential problem that can reoccur again once we implement that corrective action. And there are 13 different steps that we can take to actually verify the effectiveness of corrective action. So I'm going to talk about all those 13 steps one by one. So let's take an example, a hypothetical example. There is an organization who are milding, making a molding parts and they are assembling all those molded parts and then they are giving to a particular OEM. And there is a problem which has come from the OEM that there is some fitment issue in those assemblies of that molded part. So there can be some possible corrective action that organization may have taken. First of all, uh, and it, it can be related to correction or the corrective action. So it can be about 100% segregation at the organization, supplier and the customer end because there are certain parts which were coming from the supplier also. Then maybe for a certain time frame, all the dispatches were stopped. Then the molding fixture may have been modified. The process parameter of the molding machine may be reviewed again and updated. And to ensure that the effectiveness is good with respect to the fitment, a new molding fixture has been made to control the specification. And then also to make sure that uh, the problem should not repeat again as per the customer recommendation, it has been decided that uh, now the product will be molded on a different molding machine of 800 tons, which will be qualified. And then the communication is done to all the suppliers, incoming inspection and the final inspection team. And also the documents have been updated with respect to the, uh, the process parameters and they have been updated. And all the relevant documents like process flow chart, FMEA control plan are updated. Now comes the next step, the 13 steps. That what are the 13 different things that we need to do to verify that whether this proposed action plan is effectively implemented or not. So let's start from the first one. And the first one is talking about that whether that corrective action plan is actually implemented or not. So for that, it is important to go to the GAMBA and see that whether whatever has been proposed, all this correction and corrective action, whether they are actually implemented or they are still on paper, just like many government projects, we are completed in the paper. But when you go to the place, you find that there is no road. So that thing should not happen. Then being step number two, that whatever corrective actions have been implemented or proposed, whether they are actually practical to implement or not. Because many times we say, for example, that we'll do the segregation at the supplier end or the customer end. But maybe they are in a different city or a different country. So we may be writing on a piece of paper, but whether it is practically possible to do that or not, that needs to be seen. Or that maybe we see that now we'll have a new molding machine and on that we'll do that. But then actually we don't have an 800 ton molding machine, which we are saying that we'll use it now. So. We are proposing something, but whether it is practically possible to do or not. That brings point number three, communication. That whether all the relevant process holders, all the stakeholders like operator, engineer, supervisor, customer, supplier, whether they have been communicated about that proposed action plan or not. Like it has been seen in many places that when the problems are repeating again and again, just as 
uh, action plan is made on a computer and then it is given back to the customer because we think that uh, this is what the customer is looking for. So there is no communication to the actual stakeholders. Then brings point number four that what kind of resources that organization has provided to the concerned people when the action is being taken and those resources can be with respect to making the jigs, fixtures, tooling, maybe providing training or maybe getting a new measuring instruments and all that. And when we actually see the effective implementation, one example could be that uh, like in the example we have proposed that a new fixture will be made. So maybe that fixture has been indented but it is still stuck with the purchase process for approval and unless and until there is an approval it will not move further. So it's important to look into all those aspects like that. Then brings point number five about the timeline that we have proposed an action plan but have you defined any timeline that within a week, 10 days, one month, two months in which we need to complete all the proposed action plans or not. So for example, we have specified that we will procure a new molding fixture but we have not defined any date. So when we have not defined any date, it can go up to say 3 months, 6 months or 12 months because it will not be a priority because we have not defined any timeline. So timeline becomes a very important thing. And then step number 6, what about the quantity because when we are doing mass production, there will be a lot of material in the end process, maybe at the supplier end, organization end or maybe uh, in the transit or maybe the customer end. What happened to that particular material? What we are going to do with that particular material? So we need to find an answer with respect to that material that whatever material is kept at the supplier end, organization end, transit and the customer end, whether we need to scrap it, we need to use it, if we need to use it, then in how much timeline, maybe in 10 days, 15 days or 30 days, how many days we need to use that, all that needs to be done. And then it brings very other point that whatever actions we are taking, whether we are updating our documents or not, that is step number seven. So if we talk about a typical organization, there is a process flowchart, process FMEA, control plan, standard operating procedures, supplier PPAP and all those documents that needs to be reviewed and updated wherever the action is required. So in many cases it is being observed that the organization just tend to update the SOP which is actually being used by the operator and all the other relevant documents like process flowchart, FMEA, control plan never being reviewed and updated. So as a part of effective implementation, we can look into that and something similar needs to be done with the supplier PPAP also. And then brings point number eight that what about the validation part that when we proposed a particular action plan, what about validating that now the process and product are working correctly and whatever desired result that we want, they are actually being implemented or not. Say for example, maybe say for example, there were 50 pieces that were getting rejected earlier. Now, after the implementation of the corrective action, now whether it has come to 0 or 5 or 10 or it is still 40 or 50. If it is still same, it means whatever proposed action that we have planned, actually they are not effective. Point number 9, what about the identification and traceability of the material which is now being made after the modification of the process parameter and the fixture? So here it is important to have a proper identification mark on the old material so that the customer knows that okay that much is a quantity say 5000 pieces that needs to be consumed before the new material will come and when the new material will come this is the new coding say a green color or red color will be there and this is the shipping document number this is the date and this is the uh, ASR number from which the new material will be there so that there is a clear guideline and demarcation between the old material and the new material. And once we implement all those actions, the next step which is point number 10, that is going to talk about the customer feedback. So here the intent is that whatever actions we have taken, we feel confident, we feel good that yes, we have done a good job, we have spent a lot of money, time and energy. But what about the customer? Whether the customer is also feeling the same thing or the customer is still dissatisfied or maybe by implementing a new action plan it has resulted in a new problem or maybe the old and the new material is still getting mixed and that is creating new kind of problem in the customer end. So the customer feedback becomes very very important. And then step number 11 is talking about that whatever actions we have taken maybe immediately we are getting a good response but what about the effectiveness of those actions over a time period. So generally if you see in many of the customer formats it is being specified that for the next three months we need to review that whatever is the material that is being supplied, what is the effectiveness of those actions. So one of the key feedback would be that we can talk to the customer to understand 
that whether they are getting the same kind of problem or not or maybe a new kind of problem has reported because of that action plan taken so something similar can be done for the next three months to verify its effective implementation then the next step the point number 12 is talking about the internal audit process because whatever actions that we have taken it is not one time action we also need to verify it from time to time so that internal audit when we talk about internal audit it is talking about system audit manufacturing process audit product audit as well as the layered audit also which we need to do from time to time and during that time we need to see that whatever action plan that we have proposed whatever documents that we have updated whatever trainings that we have provided to the people whether actually it is working it is effective or not that needs to be seen and in many cases it is being seen that many times we are actually not implementing all those actions and then the checklist is not getting updated maybe the internal audit team is not aware about what needs to be checked so these are certain things that whether the communication is being done to the qualified internal auditors with respect to that or not and then finally step number 13 the last step the involvement of top management because Whatever actions we are doing, whatever time, money or energy that we are spending, unless and until top management is involved in this entire process, it is not going to serve the purpose. So we need to see that whether top management is actually interested in the customer issues, whether they are tracking the effectiveness of the actions, whether they are aware, whether the customer is satisfied or not. All those things needs to be done. So these are the 13 steps through which we can see the effective implementation of any corrective action. There can always be a possibility that after checking all that, we may find that the actions are not effective. So what can be the reason for that? So the reason could be that the management is not serious about it. The people who are working in the organization are not very serious about it. So what they can do with respect to that? Maybe they can do certain steps like they can have some effective planning. They can communicate about the action plan more clearly. They can stay focused on the root causes and not on the temporary actions. Maybe out of the box thinking and help the organization to identify what needs to be done. And whatever changes are there, those changes can be done effectively and quickly. To talk about some of the key industry challenges with respect to the effective implementation of the corrective action, the first and the foremost is that how often there is a process in the organization that once a corrective action is being implemented, they actually verify that whether those action plans are effective or not. Second, very interesting thing is that how often top management is aware about the effectiveness of the corrective action plan and they are tracking that whatever actions that the people are proposed to the customer, whether they are actually working or not. And thirdly, and the most important thing is that how often it has happened that whatever the annual appraisal process is there, therein we actually check that whatever actions that we are taking at the customer end, whether those problems are repeating again and is it more because that we propose something but we are actually not implemented on that. So if I do a summary, primarily I talked about the purposes of the uh, effective implementation process wherein I talked with respect to three things about building confidence, validating the solution and to minimize the risk and then later on I talked about the 13 different steps with respect to the corrective action plan by taking an example and those 13 steps included whether the things are actually implemented, it is practical to implement, whether the things are communicated to the concerned person, whether the resources are provided, timeline is defined, the quantity is identified, the documents which needs to be updated are updated or not, validation after the action is implemented or not, the identification and the traceability is effectively implemented, customer feedback is taken with respect to that, whether effectiveness of the actions are being verified over a timeline, what about our internal audit process and finally the effectiveness to be verified by the top management. So these are the 13 steps we take, then it's 100% sure that whatever actions that we are taking, they will be certainly effective and the customer will be highly delighted. My next video will be in line with the same series that will be step number six. And there I'm going to talk about the horizontal deployment. Regularly, I'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they're helping me to understand your expectations. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand about this video a little bit more in detail, if you see there's a link below, if you click that, you'll find a blog there. And there you will find this information in much more detail. And in case you're liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can always share with your friends and colleagues. And you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website 
भव्यमंगला डॉट कॉम थैंक यू